fast as fuck, boy. Hey guys, Mikosha here, back with the memes, the tornado shot guides, and the powerpoints. Today we'll be discussing a tornado shot build on a 10 divine budget. I think 10 divine is the best time to swap from the lightning arrow to the tornado shot, and is going to cater to a lot more players than my min max builds. Hopefully those who don't have much time playing Path of Exile, or can't generate as much currency, can still have a lot of fun with bow builds. I am very happy and proud of the build, and the guide that I've made. We are reaching crazy number such as a 2.8 million dps per arrow and a whopping 410 percent increase movement speed albeit that is at max configuration but that clear speed is something that players that even use mage blood can sometimes difficultly obtain so we're doing all of that for a fraction of the cost i know that pob and powerpoints might not be for everyone so i have decided to add a small showcase of the build so i'll talk to you guys later and enjoy the rest of the video So for today's video, we're going to be talking about when to switch to Tornado Shot, an explanation of the build and its mechanics, an overview of the gear and the possible upgrades, as well as the tree, the different variants to work for, and what to specialize in next. So if you were following the other guides, you will be right now using Lightning Arrow, which is one of the most powerful skills in mapping, especially early on. It is very strong because it gives you the possibility to overlap or shotgun your arrows, thanks to the lightning beams when you hit enemies, it could actually target additional enemies, which means a single enemy could be hit by one, two, three, or four, for example, lightning bolts, which is very strong, for example, for mapping. The added damage and conversion of lightning arrow is also something that helps it greatly in the early game, because just by using that skill, you actually have bonuses. It is massive for clearing, however, the single target is horrible. You will feel a huge difference between, for example, Lightning Arrow and Tornado Shot in the single target area, and that's why we most often use uh, Totems or the Mana Forge setup to actually be able to deal single target damage because Lightning Arrow is not that powerful in that aspect. On the other side, Tornado Shot is pretty much considered the strongest bow skill. It has massive clearing, and additional projectiles makes its scale even more. Tornado Shot will fire a primary projectile. For example, this is your character, you shoot your primary projectile, it's going to make a tornado and shoot three additional secondary projectile that can deal after that damage to the same target that was hit by the primary. However, only one of the secondary projectile can hit a target, the other ones won't deal more damage. However, with the quality, you can have four secondary projectile, which means every time you add an extra arrow to your Tornado Shot, you're actually adding one primary projectile and four secondary projectile. That means basically five more projectiles on your screen, which is huge for mapping. And it is very strong also if you're trying to overlap your arrows to deal more damage to a single target. The reason why single target damage is quite important, even if you're mapping, is for example, you are playing 100% Delirium, where monsters actually take 96% less damage, which means they have 200% more HP, or you're also just trying to boss sometimes you don't want to change builds just to specifically kill a monster for example maven or uber exarch uh, eater of world all of that turner shot can do it on top of being huge at mapping the reason why we also love tornado shot is because it's a it's a blank it's a white paper it has nothing it has no added damage no conversion which means it is very very versatile any build can incorporate tornado shot whether it's you know elemental damage cold damage chaos damage with the original sin version that's why we love tornado shot it's because it's just the skill itself that's strong 
and not what it gives you. However, because it is very versatile and kind of like a blank stake, it has a higher entry cost than Lightning Arrow to feel good. Lightning Arrow will have those bonuses, Tornado Shot won't, which means we don't really want to touch Tornado Shot before we have enough gear to be able to handle Tornado Shot. So a lot of people will tell you different ways when to switch to Tornado Shot, but the best way to know is basically put Tornado Shot in your build, try a map, and if it feels pretty much similar or slightly worse because it's normal in the beginning that it feels a bit less uh, str as strong as Lightning Arrow in terms of mapping, if it's just a bit or equal, then you know you're ready to run Tornado Shot. Now, even if it feels a bit worse, why should you actually go for Tornado Shot? Well, it's going to help you, example, for, you know, those juiced up rares, or if you're trying to, well, just the bosses in your map as well. With Lightning Arrow, it might take a lot of time. Maybe you dislike the gameplay with the Ballistas. Well, swapping to Tornado Shot will basically resolve all of your problems in terms of the single target or more concentrated damage. Trinity is going to be one of the strongest supporting gem for elemental builds. It gives more elemental damage on top of elemental penetration. It is a very strong and very OP gem, however a lot of new players have difficulty understanding it fully. So the basic of Trinity is it has three resonance of each element, lightning, cold and fire. To use Trinity at its fullest power, you must be able to proc all three resonance and for that, you're actually going to have to deal at least two of the elemental damage type. When your maximum hit is a certain elemental damage type, Trinity will proc the two other elements for the resonance. And to get the third, you're actually going to have to deal another type of elemental damage to be able to proc it. So, for example, your highest damage is going to be cold damage. You deal between 30,000 to 65,000. When you're going to hit an enemy, it's going to proc the resonance for the lightning that you see in blue and the fire. Now, if you want to get the cold resonance, your next hit must be either fire or lightning as the maximum hit. This means in this example, you wouldn't be able to proc all three resonance because your maximum lightning damage is lower than your minimum cold damage, which means your maximum elemental damage that you're going to hit, even if you hit cold and lightning, the highest one is always going to be cold. Now in this second example, you do between 6,000 to 14,000 cold damage and you deal between 3,000 to 7,000 fire damage, which means you would be able to proc Trinity at its fullest because sometimes cold damage is going to be higher than the fire and sometimes the fire is going to be higher than the cold. However, as you can see here, the difference is very small between the maximum fire damage and the minimum cold damage which means you would be proccing Trinity very rarely. That's why it's quite important. Uh, usually what I try to aim is that my second highest elemental damage type is at least in the middle compared to my... Um, sorry, the second highest one is at least in the middle compared to the highest one. For example, here I deal 12,000 damage to 27,000 cold damage, and I deal between 9,000 to 23,000 lightning damage, which means... Lightning damage will proc pretty much half the time, and the cold damage is going to proc pretty much half the time. Compared to this, the second example where the fire damage, its maximum hit is going to be maybe once every 20 hit, every 10 hit. And considering resonance only stays for 2 seconds, it's quite important to be able to deal all, second, all two types of elemental damage evenly. Berserk is probably the strongest buff you can have in this game. It can give you 20% more damage, 20% more attack speed, and 30% more movement speed. To understand how OP more are, let's take an example of a character that has 300% increased movement speed. If you ad added an additional 30% increased movement speed, you would go from 300% to 330. However, if you had 30% more movement speed on your 300% movement speed, it will actually go to 390% because you have 30% more on all your increases and that's the same thing for damage and attack speed this basically gives you a ton of movement speed as well as basically 1.44 times your attack damage because 20 percent more damage and attack speed will give you sorry 44 percent more dps however to be able to use berserk you're gonna have to use something called rage so rage is gonna be kind of like the mana but for your berserk and Berserk will use Rage every second and will increase the amount of Rage required for every second up until you don't have any Rage and then it resets to zero. 
What's really cool about Rage as well is it does have inherent bonuses. It gives you 1% attack damage per 1 Rage, 1% increase attack speed per 2 Rage, and 1% increase movement speed per 5 Rage. Although clearly not as strong as Berserk, it is also a very strong bonus to have, and because they work both together, uh, they can make your character a lot quicker and a lot stronger very easily. Now how do we proc Berserk and gain Rage? We're going to do that thanks to our Mana Forged setup. Mana Forge Arrow is a support gem which triggers, which means no animation, so instant. It triggers a bow skill gem when you spend 300% of its mana worth thanks to another bow skill. For example, you link Mana Forge Arrow to Lightning Arrow and your main attack skill is Tornado Shot. If your Lightning Arrow is worth 5 mana or costs 5 mana, you would have to spend 15 mana thanks to your Tornado Shot to be able to proc the Mana Forge, which will then proc Lightning Arrow. However, we're going to be linking something called Life Tap Support, which makes your Mana Forge setup cost life. And that will make it that every time you attack or use a bow skill, it will trigger the Mana Forge arrow no matter what the cost is. It will take life out of you. However, with Life Leech and Life Gain on hit, it's going to make no difference. So why are we going to use the Mana Forge arrow support? Is we're going to use something called a Cast on Crit. To cast on crit is when an attack crits, it will cast automatically a spell. So we're going to link Mana Forge Arrow to our Lightning Arrow, which will trigger every time we attack with our main skill. And when our Mana Forge triggers the arrow, it's going to shoot an enemy. And when it crits, it's going to cast a spell. And that spell is going to be Warlord's Mark. Warlord, uh, Warlord's Mark will curse a single enemy and we'll grant life and mana leech when we attack it, an endurance charge when we kill that enemy, and will give us 20 rage when we stun the enemy. If we use the focal point ascendancy, which gives us 75% increased effect of our marks, we will be getting 35 rage every time we stun an enemy. This will basically make us able to use berserk with a very very high uptime. It is important to understand what stuns are. Stuns happen when a player or an enemy take a hit, which will interrupt any action that we're doing. You can see if you are stunned or if you stun enemies, if they have that little round circle on their head. However, to be able to stun enemies, we need to make sure that we cannot freeze them, because when we freeze an enemy, he cannot be stunned. This means we either can't deal any cold damage, which wouldn't make sense because we're a triple elemental build, or we wouldn't be able to do the ailment, which is freeze. To do that, we're going to be using something called Secrets of Suffering. There's an item called the Interrogation, which is a small cluster jewel that you add into your tree, and it will give you something called Secrets of Suffering. Secrets of Suffering makes that you are not able to ignite, chill, freeze, or shock. However, when you deal a critical strike, you will be inflicting Scorch, Brittle, and Sapped. What are they though? Brittle gives you a plus 6% critical strike chance. That's a flat critical strike chance and that's basically four times stronger than a hatred crit watcher's eye it it's going to make your crit chance go skyrocket maybe by 30 percent 40 percent even 50 percent for some scorch will have the en enemy's elemental resistance lowered up to a 30 percent which is huge and sap will make enemies deal 20 percent less damage which is good for our survivability so Secrets of Suffering will give us a huge critical strike chance, a huge DPS boost and survivability on top of enabling us to proc the stun without having the fear of freezing enemies and not gaining rage. Another bonus that we will have in our build is going to be something called Rampage. Rampage is basically a kill streak bonus that goes from 0 to 1000. You have a 5 second delay to kill another mob before it goes back to 0. For every 20 Rampage stack, you have 1% increased movement speed and 2% increased damage. And it has 13 tiers, and every time you hit that tier, it will give you some special ability. Rampage is very strong, first of all, because it gives you increased movement speed and increased damage. And on top, the, the special effects that you have once you reach tiers are actually super useful. They can actually clear maps. For example, the, the last tier, the tier 13, the large explosion around the player that didn't make corpse, you can literally clear a whole pack just by hitting that tier. Finally, we'll be using the Adrenaline buff thanks to our Death Rush ring to make us a lot quicker and deal a lot more damage. Adrenaline is a buff that grants you 100% increased damage, 
25% increased attack, cast, and movement speed, as well as a 10% additional physical damage reduction. It is a very powerful buff, and we will be getting it with the Death Rush Ring, which can grant us adrenaline for between 1 to 3 seconds every time we kill an enemy. Considering we're going to be running through uh, packs and killing a lot of mobs, we're basically going to get adrenaline uptime all the time. Even at 1 second, you'll be having it pretty much all the time. However, 3 seconds is always good. Another mechanic that we'll be using in this build is going to be something called Lion Eyes Fall. It's a jewel that transforms all melee and melee weapon modifiers into bow modifiers. And the classic place to put the Lion Eyes Fall is going to be in this jewel socket. Why? Because it's going to transform all the dagger nose here, which grants you a ton of critical strike chance, multi, and attack speed, which is very good for us. And it is a fairly cheap item. Our bow is going to need to be an elemental damage type which means it adds flat elemental damage, such as cold, fire, and lightning. This is a perfect example where it adds this to that amount of cold, to fire, and lightning. You could go for a two, a two elemental damage type. However, I think the best option is going to be three, and they're very, very cheap to get to find. Because we're going to be relying heavily on critical strikes to inflict our ailments, to deal damage, and to proc some rage thanks to our cast on crit warlord's mark, we're going to have to use crit based bows because they are the best options as they offer the highest amount of base critical strike chance. Now, if you have a huge deal, for example, you find a bow that is worth 10 times more than what they're selling, but it's not on a critical, it's not on a crit base. Well, it might be a sacrifice you could take because you'd be saving so much more currency and you could invest it elsewhere. But if you have the budget, the best option is going to be a crit based bow with triple elemental flat added. Additional arrows is always going to be the best. It's the best stat you can have on your gear. However, it is going to be what decides if the bow is on a low budget or on a high budget. So to check how strong your bow is going to be is first of all, look at the EDPS or the elemental DPS. The higher is the better. After that, check how many additional arrows it gives you. Higher is the better. However, it's going to be a lot more expensive if you have the bow attacks fire to an additional arrow instead of the, well, none or plus one. Then look if it has a high or nice critical strike chance. And finally, check if it has good attack speed. On your bow, you should never, and I mean never, have a defensive modifier. It is the worst place to have a defensive modifier. It is an insult to all bow builds. Do never have a defensive modifier on your bow, please. For the quiver, it's the, it's the most straightforward thing possible. No defensive modifier, and if it increases your DPS, it's good. Basically, put your quiver in your quiver slot, and if you see your DPS go up, it's good. If you see your DPS go down, it's bad. Now, it's important to note, if your DPS goes down by just a little, but you have additional projectiles or additional arrows, then obviously it's going to be worth it, because in total, if you add all the arrows that you shoot, you will be dealing more damage. So things to look out for your quiver is going to be flat damage, damage with bows, elemental damage, and projectile speed, which is often slept upon but projectile speed is very strong a good budget unique option is poised prism and it is actually the quiver i'm using in all of the showcase in this video it is very very cheap uh, and pretty much anyone can buy it on any budget for the body armor we're going to look if it's a rare for the aura effects for example increase of non-curse aura or anger effect stuff like that we're looking for suppression avoidance and resistance the best body armor in my opinion is going to be harry's ire why because it gives you a ton of suppression 30 percent chance to suppress damage which is huge it gives you a ton of flat damage the added cold damage with bow attacks is a huge modifier that increases your dps by a ton on top of it it's an evasion base which can give you a lot of flat evasion that can scale with your grace or with your flask and as we know, evasion is a chance to not get hit. And when you don't get hit, you don't take damage. For the amulet, Hyrie's Truth is going to be the best in slot. It is very common, very cheap. And I suggest that you actually keep that one up until you get Omniscience. If you're not planning on getting Omniscience, I don't think Hyrie's Truth is going to be an item that you must swap. It is very strong by itself. It gives you Culling Strike. Culling Strike is the ability to instantly kill any monster or any enemy when its HP is at 10% or lower. Even if you deal one damage and the enemy at 10% has a 
1 million life pool, it's still going to instantly kill it. On top of that, it gives you precision, which is one of the most important aura that we have, as it gives you a lot of accuracy and critical strike chance. And on top, it gives you precision at level 30 and at 100% increased mana reservation. When you see 100% increased mana reservation efficiency, that does not mean it's 100% free. It just means it has a 100% reduced cost, which is half of it. So precision will only take half the space than it's supposed to be on your mana pool. For the rings, we're going to be using any ring that gives you a lot of elemental resistance as well as flat damage or increases in damage. Rare rings are going to be quite strong, but I think unique rings are going to be the best option because they're cheaper, which means you can invest elsewhere and they give pretty much the same bonuses. The taming is a very good example. It gives you a 30% increase elemental damage with attack skill, an additional 30% increase elemental damage, and then up to 40% elemental resistance. It also gives you the chance to freeze shock ignite and increase damage if you've frozen shocked or ignited an enemy. However, we won't be getting those bonuses because we're using Secrets of Suffering, but, is it, but it doesn't change the fact that the taming is still a very strong ring and I actually use it in the setup that you've watched. The second ring, which is the best I find, is going to be the Death Rush ring because it gives you adrenaline as well as recovery of life on kill. 3-5% to of life recovered on kill is huge. Considering we're going to be killing maybe 20, 30 monsters at the same time in less than a second, you can recover pretty much half your HP instantly just by killing monsters. And on top, you get the huge bonus of, of adrenaline that is 100% increased damage and 25% increased attack speed and movement speed. It's huge. For your gloves, the best gloves, in my opinion, are going to be the Shadows and Dust. They give you Rampage, which is the bonus that we were talking about uh, early on, Critical Strike Chance, Critical Strike Multiplier, and Leech for mana and life leech. Although it is physical attack damage, it is still a leech, and you can't be mad at that. I know a lot of players or a lot of bail guides say that you should use rare gloves and use the Bisco's Leech for the, your Rampage, but I still think that getting the gloves as Shadows and Dust and using another type of belt is going to be a better option. So that's why I suggest Shadows and Dust. Very cheap, you can have good corruptions on them, like additional flat uh, critical strike chance or more frenzy charges or leech, anything uh, is very good. Shadows and Dust, very cheap, very strong. For the boots, it's going to be pretty much standard boots. You want movement speed, flat life, resistance, avoidance, suppression. I think that once you hit, you know, triple elemental resistance with a bit of movement speed, you shouldn't invest more into them. Why? Because once you're going to go for the omniscience transition, well, elemental resistance will be use useless. So just get elemental resistance, good movement speed. The rest is only secondary. Don't invest too much, but don't be afraid to invest in your boots. For the belt, Abyssal Belts are often going to be the best, especially when you are running the Charms, right, the new Ascendancy. However, with the new Tinctures, a Micro Distillery Belt with a 30% increased effect on Flask can make you so quick. And if you use the Tincture with an additional 30% increased effect, it is going to be completely overpowered. I'm running this setup with the Micro Distillery tech, and I literally have the impression I'm running with a Mage Blood. As I was saying uh, earlier on, some people say to use Bisco's Leech for the Rampage, but in my opinion, Bisco's Leech is not worth it compared to Shadows and Dust. And the bonuses that you have with the Abyssal Belt, so the, the Stygian Vise, that's the name of those belts, or the Micro Distillery, are a lot higher than getting Rare Gloves and Bisco's Leech. For the stats, it's pretty much similar for both. You want Flat Life, Increase in Elemental Damage, Resistance, and Attributes. If you're running the Stygian Vise and you don't know which uh, Abyssal Jewel to use, my favorite mod on Abyssal Jewels are going to be the chance to gain phasing on kill, which grants us the ability to basically walk through enemies and not get cut. I think that's a very useful quality of life and survivability option. And then it's pretty basic. It's just going to be flat damage. Okay, so for the tree section, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to go up and as pretty much all the other Tornado Shop builds, we're going to follow the similar tree. We're going to go here for the Primal Spirit and Heart of Orc for life and mana. We're getting Finesse for attack speed and accuracy. And then we're going to go down this way for the movement speed and suppression. We're going to get the Life Mastery, which is very good because you want HP. We're going to go down here for the Elemental Mastery, 
make sure to go on the right and not on the left because the chance to freeze shock and ignite is useless because we are getting secrets of suffering. The elemental mastery hits have 25% chance to treat enemy monsters. Elemental resistance as inverted is very strong. It can give you, I think, maybe 15% increased DPS. Right over here, we're going to go through the crit wheel. I prefer going on the left side because it gives you critical strike chance as well as critical strike multiplier. And because we're using brittle, we're always going to be crit cap basically. So crit multiplier is going to be more important. I then go for the HP wheel right over here and I get for long shot because I will be shooting far away. If we go back up right here, I'm using the same good old bow wheel for the critical strike chance and the attack speed. The mastery is the increases and reductions to projectile speed also applied to damage with bows. Very useful because we have more projectile speed which is better clear and on top of that we get more damage. I am using a lethal pride because I, ha I was missing actually strength because I'm using um, berserk which requires strength because it's a red gem. So I just used a random lethal pride that I bought for a few chaos. I am also taking the crit wheel uh, because I will be critiquing. And just above that, I will be using the spell suppression wheel because I want that thing to be capped. It will help you for, sur for survivability a lot. Right over here, I went for the pierce. Uh, it just pierces a single projectile. That's because I'm using the poised prism uh, quiver. However, if you get a rare quiver with the base uh, pierces an additional projectile, you can actually save yourself two points and invest them elsewhere. I'm using multi-shot obviously for that additional projectile and I was lucky to get the 5% chance to deal double damage. If you go up right over here, I'm using the leech uh, setup right for the gain life and mana on hit, then leech and then the 10% leech of is instant which means I have a lot of recovery and if you add the, the death rush, my recovery is going to be very very powerful. I'm getting more HP. Don't forget to take the 15% increased maximum life if there are no life modifiers on your body armor because Hyrie's Iron actually does not have any life modifiers on the chest and that's a very good bonus. Finally, right above here, you're going to recognize this setup pretty easily. It's going to be the Lion Eyes Fall setup for the, uh, the actually, as you can see here, this is usually daggers, daggers, critical strike chance, daggers here, Increase damage with daggers. Uh, and if I put the line ice fall, it's actually just going to transform into bow attacks. Increase critical strike chance with bows, multiply with bows. Right over here, bow attacks deal 8% damage with hits and increase attack speed with bows. So very powerful. Now I'm currently in town, so my DPS is not high, but let's say with it, I'm at 51,000. Without it, I'm at 32,000. So that's basically what? 35-40% of your DPS is going to come thanks to Lina's Fall. Now, in map, obviously, the difference is not going to be 40,000. It's going to be that 35-40%. to 40%. In maps, I was hitting around 650, 700, sometimes 1,000 DPS. And Lina's Fall basically counts for 300,000 of them. So it is a very strong jewel. And it is practically free. It's just a few chaos and it's not a cluster. You don't need to craft anything. All you need to do is have enough points. Now, if you start investing a bit more, you'll be able to add a medium cluster or a large cluster. I went for the Martial Prowess and Feed the Fury. It was self-crafted. However, if you don't have enough currency, it's okay. Just go for the Secrets of Suffering. Without Secrets of Suffering, you can get the Rage Generation, which is pretty much what makes this build so strong because you get Berserk on top of the Adrenaline and on top of the Rage bonuses. Now, this character is level 97. However, if you are level 85, which is often going to be the level players are going to watch for this video, basically take off all the points for this cluster wheel, take off long shot, which isn't the most important. And then if you're able to, it is, it might be a bit expensive. I don't know. You might be able to anoint multi shot and not use this wheel, which will save you four points. So you'll be saving four points here. One, two, three, four, four other points here. So that's eight. And then take off those 11 points and that will make you, it's the same tree as a level 86. If you're level 84 or 85, sorry, instead of going left, just go right. You'll save yourself another point and that will be the tree for a level 85 character. All of that information is going to be in POB anyways. 
So all you have to do is just check that out and change the level. So in terms of what to upgrade by priority, I think that with the rings, the amulet, the glove and the chest, you actually don't have to invest more into them. Just make sure you have all the links and the sockets that you want. And once that's done, you can completely forget about them. The most important gear to invest is always going to be your bow and quiver. We're bow characters, which means our bow and our quiver is going to be our trusted friend. We need them to be strong because the stronger they are, the stronger we are. After that, I really suggest starting to invest in your passive tree. Get cluster jewels, uh, unique jewels, for example, uh, you're going to invest maybe for omniscience. So try to find some good lethal pride for that strength requirement because you're going to need strength, for example, for berserk and stuff like that. So if you have good lethal, um, a good lethal pride, well, it's worth it. You're going to start investing maybe for crit clusters, maybe for the 12 passive bow clusters. They are very strong, very powerful, and you can add them onto your tree even with this setup, and they're just going to make your build better. After that, I suggest investing maybe a bit in your helmet and glove. But once you have the resistance and the implicits that you want, don't invest more because they're all going to change once you go for the omniscience transition, which is often going to be the next build in your, you know, your progression as a bow build. Finally, what to upgrade in terms of defense, try to work for that 100% avoidance. You can replace a haste for evasion or purity of elements, and that will depend on what you feel is best. I know a lot of players like to use purity of element for that 100% avoidance, but with your Pantheon, you're able to be immune to uh, freezes, and with a mod on your boots, you're able to be immune to chills, which makes it that you're never slowed. But I know a lot of players hate being ignited or shocked because that reduces their survivability. So that's pretty much what you're going to feel is better for you. So why run this build? Well, the build is going to be the base of all Tornado Shot. If you're trying to be a bow build, uh, a boy enjoyer, you're going to run Tornado Shot. But to get to your min-max endgame build, well, you're going to start with something. And I think this something should be this build. It is very strong as it has awesome clearing. The single target, because we're using Warlord's Mark and not Sniper's Mark, is a bit lacking. However, I think that if you have a good bow, you make your gear right, and you actually play the bell like it's meant to be, so mapping, you're going to have no problems. You'll be able to farm all the currency that you need to then be able to choose which Tornado Shot variant you want to work for. If you don't know what Tornado Shot you would like to go to, I suggest either the Omniscience version, the Triple Elemental Min-Max, which also uses Omniscience, Physical to Cold Conversion, which also uses Omniscience, or Magic Find Tornado Shot, a Sanctum Runner, or just a Pure Mapper. You can also, I, didn't, I forgot to add, use the Original Sin version, which is, you know, a lot more expensive than most Tornado Shot, as just the ring can cost upwards to 100 Divines. So for people that don't have that amount of currency, maybe it's just... A long dream however i still think that with 10 divine this build can be an absolute powerhouse of a mapper and you can have a blast without having to spend mirrors and mirrors or buying a mage blood on that note guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video and the way i constructed it if you have any feedback or questions let me know in the video description or in the comments sorry or if you want you can join the discord server we are currently 5400 players very active a lot of players we have a lot of helpers as well if you want to join the helping team or if you wish to get help you can always join the discord it's completely free all my build pobs are all in there which means if you have if you if you wish to have a different tornado shot on a different budget you're probably going to find the pob in my discord and on that note have fun